showing me. His head. Come on. Ah, now we come back to the story element that we kind of did care about in the first place. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Let It Bleed, episode 21 of Supernatural Season 6, and this is a difficult episode to kind of talk about in terms of whether it's good or bad. Crowley's goons capture Lisa and Ben in attempts to try and have Sam and Dean be so distracted with trying to find them that him and Castiel can finally get to purgatory without any kind of interference. However, this is kind of a boneheaded plan because they'll figure it out. You would think Crowley would have that kind of forward knowledge ahead of himself. Maybe he thinks that Castiel will kind of try to stop it, but he's already at odds with Castiel, and Castiel is already having issue with what they're doing. I don't know how this was supposedly a plan that would work. In the terms of how things are going, it just so happens to also coincide with HP Lovecraft. Let's kind of be honest, they don't really refer to it at all other than how he died, and apparently the woman who had the sword that could kill dragons was actually the creature that came out of Purgatory. So there's that little slight connection there, but really the whole purgatory thing is kind of whatever in terms of how they go about connecting her to the story. At the very most, trying to make you care about the dilemma that's going on with Lisa and Ben. However, they've been handled so poorly throughout this whole season. The first episode, sure, it did kind of introduce Dean to a normal life, but the problem is he has treated these guys like shit throughout the entire season and they have also been so irrelevant throughout this entire season which by the way speaking of dean this season has got to be one of the worst for his character his name's misha misha with the constant hypocrisy that this asshole does the back and forth jokes that are range from horrible to selfish to just being an all-around shit character and very selfish. I actually had to make a physical note when this episode started because of it. Back and forth consistency slash hypocrisy that Dean has when it comes to elements of pop culture. If he's making a film or video game reference and no one else knows about it, he insults them or kind of defends himself and be like blah 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 blah. But then when something like, for instance, Lovecraft, HP Lovecraft is mentioned and he doesn't know, he immediately goes to insulting everyone and calls them geeks or nerds. Yet he has done it in previous episodes. He literally did it in the Frontier episode. But then when Sam talked about Star Trek or whatever, he was like, uh, nerds. Stupid and we don't get it. <laughs> this joke, I hope, fucking dies because it is so easy to pull apart the hypocrisy. Maybe it's just me, but I'm, he's really being a fucking dick. That's a huge bitch. And then back onto the actual episode, there is the drama of what happens when they do find Ben and Lisa. Lisa is possessed by a demon and the demon stabs herself and there is that rush to get into the hospital. Sure, there's some cool action here. There's actually a pretty cool double takedown flip over a guardrail that Sam and Dean do. And then Sam just conveniently gets captured and put into a cage, but then he gets out of it. The episode does try to make you pull at your heartstrings when he has Castiel wipe their memory. Now that is a bit of a contention. You do feel bad for Dean for doing so. He is once again 100% removing any kind of escape that he has. Mainly because they know that the show's going to keep on going and they just cannot keep these guys around. So the show does literally one of the cheapest means of getting them out of the show. Sure, it's not killing them, granted, okay, but I guess having them walk away would leave too many avenues in terms of them being able to be reassociated with the story, and Dean doing that sacrifice, well, it's a selfish sacrifice to be honest, because just because they don't know who he is, he knows who they are, and Crowley or whoever could just do the exact same thing again. I don't really like this episode. The only part that I do like is the very, very end where Castiel straight up ghost grabs the Lovecraft lady. It's another good little dangly bit of ooh as to what might happen in the next episode. Well, actually, no, it's the season finale. It does make you want to watch the next episode, even if the episode that you just watched was kind of Eh, in terms of its execution. It's not forgettable because it is quite a big sacrifice, 
it's a selfish one. You know, you have to acknowledge that it is a big thing for Dean to do. It just isn't unfortunate because he's been a fucking dick this whole season that you don't care. So in the end, my rating for this episode, this preseason finale to season six, I'm going to give it a three out of seven. I haven't given a preseason finale this low of a rating since season one in terms of chronological. We're, I'm not talking about later on. We're, we're not going there yet. Eh, it is sure uh, an episode and it does slightly talk about stuff to build up to the finale of the season but and unfortunately its core narrative its core focus of characters are characters you don't give a shit about and neither does the show but anyways those are my thoughts about this episode what do you guys have to say all right, so there wasn't really many of you who had a comment about this one, so this will be quick. Let It Bleed is my least favorite penultimate episode Sarah Gamble has written for the show. But to be fair, that's because she was writing each penultimate episode of season one and to five. This episode really shows how much Sarah Gamble, the showrunner, was invested in Dean's relationship with, with Lisa and Ben. I love the references to H.P. Lovecraft. Originally, the last two episodes were plan to be called The Hunter in the Dark, parts one and two, to contrast Lovecraft's novel, The Hunter in the Dark. And I wish they'd stuck with that, the fitting, so much fitting with Castile's dark deeds and Sam being in the dark when his wall breaks in the episode. I also love the genuine care Bobby has for Eleanor's son in the mental institution. As messed up Dean is for what he does, for those he loves, I love seeing Dean in the dark, torturous and killing machine he is for Lisa and Ben. However, the goofiest moment of the episode has to be when Sam is knocked back by the demon henchman and locked up, hidden away. It was obviously a good way for, uh, for of making Ben help shoot demons while Dean carries a dying Lisa. It's goofy, but I don't care. I loved it. Dean erasing Lisa... Dean erasing Lisa and Ben's memories broke my heart. Yes, I know it's a common Hollywood trope for the, for the characters who protect their loved ones doing it, but Jensen's heartbreaking acting and Lisa and Ben's confusion of seeing Dean broke me. Replacing the memories of his time with Ben and Lisa as a fabricated car crash is honestly the perfect metaphor describing what happened in the relationship. Also, an Easter egg, Sam spite, spitefully mentions Lisa in Season 9 against Dean. I'll mention that later in your Season 9 review of the episodes. I think I remember the part you're talking about. Lastly, I want to point out and hear your thoughts on this, but what if this episode with some tweaks was the first episode of the season? Imagine Crowley and his demons burst in, kidnapping Ben and Lisa. Dean tries to rescue them with a failed attempt. Just as he is about to be killed, Sola, Sam, Bobby, and the Campbells come in run and gunning down demons. Lisa is still fatally injured. Castiel arrives to heal her, but he is unable to do uh, due to a warding from Crowley. Dean has his conflicted reunions with everyone like before, but this time... Though the ep the season he has reluctantly trains Ben to become a hunter in the last scene of the episode has Lisa's corpse eyes open black demon oh demon black from Crowley's orders to me that would have been a perfect season opener in the aftermath of season five many fans are st or were hoping that as it is that Let It Bleed would have been originally made Ben be raised by Dean and become a hunter leading to season seven I can respect what you think now admittedly there's a lot there because there's a lot going on. Um, in terms of having Ben be a part of the show, like having an actual kid, like there's a lot of child actor issues with that. He wasn't a good actor. Uh, having Lisa die, maybe, like admittedly having that kind of introduction instead of the weird creatures that were attacking the beginning may have made a little bit more of a connection, but I don't know, it could have worked. Honestly, the opening sucks. So the first, uh, the season opener's ball, so I would have taken anything over it, honestly. Let it bleed. I wasn't surprised that Crowley would have Ben and Lisa kidnapped, nor was I surprised that Dean would refuse to call to Castiel for help at this point. He's still furious at him for working with Crowley, but I'm surprised that Castiel didn't tell Balthazar that he was in cahoots with Crowley. I really enjoyed the scene between Castiel and Dean. I was glad that Balthazar decided to help Dean and Sam find Ben and Lisa. It was interesting to seeing a different side of Balthazar. I was surprised to find out that DVR Askey was from Purgatory. I didn't see that coming. Cindy Sim Samson did a great job as the demon that was possessing Lisa. I really felt sorry for Dean because he forced he is forced to literally close the life he had with Lisa and Ben by having their memories of him erased. I really hated that the writers got rid of Ben and Lisa like this to me because even though Castiel erased their memories, they could have been used as leverage by other enemies. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing, right? Like, that is something that is not truly answered with this. It's just a very lazy means of getting rid of these characters that no one liked and they also did nothing to actually develop them. 
Man, there goes one of the most underdeveloped plot lines in Supernatural. Goodbye, Lisa and Ben. I guess Dean doesn't have to pay for damages. Oh well. Oof. Rough. But also, not untrue. Remember back in Season 4 when I criticized the Rapture and when the Levy breaks because I thought they were boring fillers that came at the end of the season? Well, I was a moron for that. This atrocious episode is poorly constructed filler that comes just before the season ends. Let It Bleed showcases the utter mess that was the writing department of Season 6. Why the hell is Lisa and Ben back? Why do they keep bringing these horrible characters again and again? They could have gotten rid of them in, in the episode 6, yet they came back, and because they, apparently they were as important to the story as the Campbells. I don't buy for a second that Dean is the father of that kid, and Ben, God, he has no brain cells. I'm so sorry, I can't stand him when he's playing the tough guy in episode 2, and now he freezes like a coward that he is. Uh, yeah, I'm super harsh, so I'm sorry, Rick can't stand stupidity. Now, something that I've kind of noticed is I used to do that too when I watched action movies and whatnot with kids or characters like that in those situations. But admittedly, when you think about it, when you're in one of those situations, it's one of the same. It's one thing to say that you could do this, and it's another to actually be in that situation yourself. So I'll give them that. Like the the kids are not really good actors. Um, but the, and also just like the storyline was so terribly written for these guys. It's. I'm not sorry to see them go because they were kind of crap, but I'm, I'm I'm sorry that they went out like crap, if that makes sense. All right, guys, this is it. This is the end. I didn't think I'd reach it, but I got sick, so I blasted my way through it. This is the fastest I've actually watched any of the Supernatural seasons since I've started doing this, but I think I just wanted to rip this fucking Band-Aid off quick. We are now heading into the finale of season six. So make sure to give me you guys' comments about that episode and I'll read those off in the next review. If you guys like this review, please leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. But until then, I'll see you guys next week for the last one.